This is section 4.3. We're going to involve the phase shift. So this is the last part of that equation we have not seen. So what we're going to do is we're going to take everything we've done in 4.2, we're going to apply it, and then basically a phase shift just means we're going to move your graph, pick it up and move it either left or right, depending upon what kind of shows up inside. But this is going to bring back um, rules that we've used in Algebra 2. It's kind of the whole backwards idea. So in this case, if you would have like x minus 2 squared back in Algebra 2, you said we're going to move it right two units. Okay. In this case, if I have um, 2 sine 4 x minus pi over 6 plus 9 or 2 or whatever, my phase shift is going to be, think opposite, right pi over 6 units. Okay. If it would end up being a x plus pi over 4, this means that it would be left pi over 4. Okay, that one up there is right pi over 6. And that's the idea. Don't worry about the arrows. People are going to freak out about that, but that's okay. We're going to just think, hey, think algebra 2, think kind of the backwards change idea. So in this problem, if it's inside, one thing I need to emphasize too is your x value needs to be all alone. Okay, that's why this b is out front. You're going to have to factor it out. I need a 1x. So if anything's in there, it's going to have to be factored out, and I'll show you that in a second. Okay, in this case, there is no other amplitude but 1. So normal sine curve, okay, the period is your normal 2 pi. And what we're going to do is shift this thing which way? What is my phase shift? It's a plus in here, so it's backwards. I need to move this thing left pi over 2, which is why my bounds are messed up. Usually we have 0 to 2 pi. If you subtract pi over 2, that's why it's negative pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2. But anyway, here's what I do. Graph your parent function without the phase shift, because phase shift really confuses a lot of students. So if I kind of forget about this for a little bit, can you guys graph just sine of x? Everybody should be, la be like, yes, I like graphing sine now. This one's really easy. My period is 2 pi. I don't have to worry about anything. Here's pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2 and sine, normal amplitude, up, back down, here, there. All right, so that's pretty easy, right? So now how do I figure this part out? I just need to, excuse me, move this thing left pi over 2. So everything's the same except my phase shift. Every coordinate point needs to be moved left pi over 2 units. So negative pi over 2 instead of being at 0. Here's where I start. Instead of being there, I move it left. Instead of being there, move it left. Instead of being here, move it left. Instead of being there, move it left. And that becomes my curve. And that's as easy as it has to be. So I always do the phase shift absolutely last. And we don't really have too big of a problem. Okay. So now let's kind of figure this part out. Next one. I'm going to move cosine pi over 2 right and here is the cosine 90 degrees okay 90 degrees of sine that's all a cosine really means but how do I figure that out if I do normal cosine okay normal cosine to me I, my amplitude still 1 negative 1 I know I have to graph those four coordinate points so normal cosine would be here and down and here here and here. And this would be 2 pi because my period is still the same. So pi over 2 units apart. And this would be my normal cosine. Well, what happens when I shift this thing pi over 2 to the right instead of being at 0? Pi over 2. Instead of being here, there. Instead of being there, right here, here, to here. And then I would be one step farther I pi over 2, I would be there. And this becomes my cosine curve. Shifted pi over 2 units to the right. Now, if you guys actually take this one step farther, what does this look like? It actually looks like the original sine curve, not moved, because that's what cosine means, is 90 degrees shifted to the right. Okay? And we kind of talked about that the one day in class. But that's the idea. If I ask you to graph cosine shifted to the right, I'm going to like to see you dash it and then move every coordinate point, pi over 2, to the right. Okay, 
mass chaos happening on this one. Now, what is significant about how this is set up? My x is not all alone. That's what I was talking about right away on this problem. So you need to make this thing look like our original formula. I have a number that it has to be 1x. I have to factor whatever I need to out. So in this case, I need to factor out a 2 to make x all alone. Now, if I divide by 2, I have to divide by 2 to everything. Okay, divide by 2 or multiply by 1 half what ends up being inside. It'll end up being x plus pi over 2 times 2 or 4. Because you must be able to distribute back in and get your original answer. No phase shift on this one, so that's kind of nice. All right. That's a big, big, big important step because if you don't take that 2 out of both of them, your phase shift is wrong. Okay. So now my I need to kind of list out what's going on. So my amplitude is 3. My period, since it's sine, is 2 pi divided by 2, or just pi. And then my phase shift would be left pi over 4, because it's a plus inside. Okay. So now I need to kind of figure out exactly how this is going to work out for me. Now if I just graph this without the phase shift, I want to kind of do this without it. I have a sine curve, so I start at 0. Okay, amplitude is now, instead of being up 1, now I'm going to kind of jump hoops, but instead of just going up 1 and down 1, it's going to be up 3 and down 3. I'm just going to change my increments instead of doing this multiple times to try to save time. Okay, period. All right, I only need one period because I only see it between negative pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4, so I'm just going to go what's my period pi so what am I going to count by what is your pi over 4 so pi over 4 2 pi over 4 is pi over 2 3 pi over 4 and pi now if I graph my original guy without the phase shift that's why I want to write this without the phase shift I would start here go up 3 back down all the way down to negative 3 and back to 0 it is a normal sine curve period is pi Okay, amplitude is 3, except now I need to apply my phase shift of left 4, and then that's what will it'll make it look like. So I'm going to go left, left 4, left pi over 4. So instead of being at 0, pi over 4. Back there, move this one over. All of these move over a very, very nice increment. And the blue line becomes the answer of the problem. What was significant about this problem? You had to get this x by itself, so you got your phase shift to be accurate. Once you guys get these equations set up accurately, I firmly believe they are not overly difficult to do. Okay. So now I have four more to do. I'm going to try to do them as quick as possible. Okay. Once again, if you look at this one, it's cosine now, but my phase shift is not accurate because x is not all alone. So I would want to rewrite this. 2 cosine. What do I need to take out? A 3. What's left then? x plus, I need to divide them both by 3. I end up getting pi over 3. Yikes. Okay. Now, how do I figure out the rest of it? Now, let's do this without the phase shift, and then we'll move it. Okay, so just worry about the amplitude and the period. Okay, so my amplitude that's just 2. So it's going to stretch. Instead of going 1 up and 1 down, I'm going to go 2 up and 2 down. Okay, that's how I'm going to do the amplitude every single time from here on out. Period. It's 2 pi divided by 3. Yikes, this is ugly. I'm purposely putting these hard ones on here so you guys don't get as frustrated Okay, later on. So now I know that my one full period, let's, let's graph this guy. Let's just do this now as this stands. One period is 2 pi over 3 units. Okay, if I divide that by 4, divide it by 4 or times by 1 fourth, I get 2 pi over 12 or pi over 6. So I'm going to add pi's over 6's. Pi over 6, 2 pi over 6 is pi over 3. Okay, 3 pi over 6 becomes pi over 2. 
So I'm actually adding 30 degrees every time, but I want these in radians, okay? So now I could graph my cosine curve. It starts at up, down, back, down, up. And that's kind of how I could sketch this guy. That's the original one. Problem is I'm phase shifting this thing. How far am I phase shift? What is my phase shift? Okay. Phase shift is, got to go back up here, left pi over 3. Okay. Pi over 3 is more than one increment. It's actually two increments. So I need to go left, but I'm counting by pi's over 6's. So I need to go two units left. And that's what happens. That's how you do this. So now I start at 0. I go 1, 2 increments. 1, 2. 1, 2. 1, 2. And then 1, 2. And that's what it's going to look like. If I want one complete cycle, that's what I would look for. Okay? So I took the original guy without the phase shift, because we, I think, at this point, are doing a really good job at graphing it without the phase shift. And then you can just move it, whatever the phase shift says. Now, this one was a little bit harder, because it wasn't only just one over. You had to go two over, but still fully possible. And now the last three, I'm going to really, really stretch you, okay? These are not easy. We will definitely practice these. So if you don't get it, please, please, please don't give up on me, all right? So amplitude, period, vertical shift. Now we have a vertical shift. That's what scares everybody. Let's uh, rewrite this, though, so that I have my equation in the correct form. I have a 2 in here. I can't have it inside. So I'm going to rewrite this as y equals negative 4 cosine 2. And I'm going to have x minus, if I divide everything by 2, it's going to end up being 3 pi over 4 plus 1. Yee boy. Okay. So what's my amplitude? Amplitude actually is 4, but we need to reflect it to cure that negative sign. So it's a pot, actually absolute value would be just a 4, but you need to reflect it. Okay. My period. What is my period? See, I'm dealing with cosine, so it's 2 pi divided by 2, or just pi. All right? And then my phase shift would be right 3 pi over 4. Yikes. Okay? And then I also have a vertical shift of 1. Oh, my goodness sakes. Okay, how am I going to deal with this? So let's figure this out. I'm dealing with cosine. So let's uh, graph the original cosine with the original amplitude, okay? And let's see if we can figure that out first, and then we'll kind of shift everything. So if I just do the original guy in blue, amplitude's going to be 4, right? So normally the cosine, I'm just going to go 4, okay? Would normally start up top, come down, Go down, go back, go up. I hope all of you could agree with that. But since I have a reflected sign, it's going to start at the bottom. Go back to zero, actually go up, then back down, and then back down. Okay? So now I have, this is actually my original guy, original cosine with the amplitude reflected. Okay? And my period is pi instead. So this would be pi instead of 2 pi, which means these are pi over 4 units apart. Okay? So I've dealt with the amplitude, I've dealt with the period. Now you got to do all the shifting. Well, this is just like your h and your k now. Okay? You can take every coordinate point, you got to move it right 3 pi over 4. Oh no, I ran out of room. I wasn't thinking ahead. Okay? 3 pi over 4 means you need to move this thing 1 2 3 units. So I need 1 2, I better rewrite this. I'm sorry, everybody. I wasn't thinking ahead. Okay, so I said my phase shift was right, 3 pi over 4, and my vertical shift is up 1. I'm going to run into that, but that's okay. I'm going to have to go 3 units over. So this is going to be 5 pi over 4. 3 pi over 2, 7 pi over 4, and that's as far as I'll get, because that's as far as I need to go, but, oh, 
Yep, and then we're good. So now let's figure this out. I'm going to move 3 pi over 4 to the right. So this coordinate point right here, uh, I should pick pink. Maybe black. Black is my answer. Okay, this is my original one. I need to move 3 pi over 4 to the right and 1 unit up. So I actually need to say, hey, I'm going to have coordinate points at negative 3. Probably need all of these labeled. And then I need to go one more up at 5. So this is going to be mass chaos. And that's what these end up being because they're very hard. So 3 pi over 4 to the right. And then I'm going to be at negative 3. Then I move to my next coordinate point. All right, here we go. 3 pi over 4 to the right just means 1, 2, 3 units up 1. Okay. Same idea. Oh, here we go. Then I go 1, 2, 3 units and up 1. And then I need to go here. 1, 2, 3 units up 1. And then the last one's here. 1, 2, 3 units up 1. And now I should have my coordinate points in black. And the phase shifts and the vertical shifts, you can just do like your H and your K. So originally was here, and we moved it right and up. And that's the idea. All right. <sighs> let's change this. Let's not do secant. Let's say this is sine. Okay. Because of the pi over 6, this is horrible because it's going to end up being pi over 12. Let's just change that to sine just to be consistent. Okay. And be a little bit quicker. All right. So once again, I need to rewrite this. Y equals negative sine. I need to factor out a 2. X minus. You're going to end up with pi over 12 on the bottom. Minus 3. Who I have to do all of them. All right, how do I deal with this? I know my amplitude is 1, but it's reflected. Okay? I know my period, originally 2 pi divided by 2 is going to be pi. Then my shifts are ugly. I have a phase shift of right pi over 12 and a vertical shift of 3 down. Yuck. Okay. So how would I do this? The original one, if I just take sine, reflected, and period of pi, we all could probably do that. Okay? So if I say, hey, negative 1, 1, period's pi, so that means we're going pi over 4 units apart, and I start here, up, but it has to be reflected, right? So that means it's going to go down, back here, back up, and back there. Okay? That would cure my original sine graph, okay, of those two. So my amplitude is just reflected, my period becomes pi. So hopefully we all can agree with that at this point. And then I have these phase shifts. I I have to go right pi over 12. Well, pi over 12 is not on my graph. That's what makes it super, 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 super hard. Okay? Pi over 4. Okay, pi, how do I get from pi over 4 to pi over 12? That's like a third of it. So what really sucks about this is you actually need to make, hey, three little tick marks or essentially two tick marks between each one. And that would mean going over pi over 12. Now, here's the kicker. If it's super hard like this, I'm not going to necessarily look for the actual coordinate pi over 12. I'm going to look and see if you can get approximately close and know that, hey, I need to go right just a tish. Okay? And then three down, I'm really going to look for. So that's what I really want you to focus on. Instead of being at zero, my actual new home base is going to be there. So that's what my graph should kind of look at. So I'm going to go down three, and i got to go over pi over 12. I need to go, so this is negative 4, negative 3, negative 2. This thing needs to go down 3 and over just a tish. Okay? Down 3, over just a bit. Down 3 and over just a bit. And then down 3, over one tick mark. So that becomes my new sine curve. Okay? And that's kind of the process that I would take and do each time. All right. I hope that kind of helps in a way to kind of help you out with um, weird phase shifts that can happen. Once again, I'm not going to look for you 
sitting here all day long marking out 12, pi over 12, 2 pi over 12, 3 pi over 12, and so on. That's just not worth the time. Okay. The last one, this is a big time stretch as well. It's tangent and it does get messy. But it's a process is the same and I just want to show one and have one online for those of you that want to go back and look. Okay. So 2 tangent. What do I need to factor out? A 2. And it's going to be x plus pi over, if I divide them all by 2, 8 plus 1. Eee boy. So we have what? Amplitude is 2. My period, remember tangent is not 2 pi, it's pi. So it's originally pi divided by 2. So that's my new period. And then I have a phase shift of left pi over 8. And then I got to go a vertical shift of up 1. Yeah, ugly. So how do I figure out my asymptotes? Well, here's what we need to remember. Original tangent. So if I go back down here and draw original tangent, I'm sorry, these should be asymptotes. Oop, getting to the assignment too quick here. It's usually negative pi over 2. And pi over 2, we have the normal curve that looks something like that. Okay, so we're pi apart, but this time we're pi over 2 apart, so it's cut in half. So these asymptotes got to be cut in half. So my actual asymptotes would become negative pi over 4 to pi over 4. Okay, so that would be the original or the asymptotes for this new equation without the phase shift. So I'm actually going to draw two of them. With the without the the shifts, I'm going to draw what it normally would be. So in this case, without the shifts, so this would be maybe actually graphing y equals two tangent two x. No ver phase shift, no vertical shift. This is what you would see. You would have your asymptotes cut in half, or pi is over four. Okay, and then these coordinate points here, instead of being at one, it'd be at two. So if I put one two, one two. Right in the middle, I would be at 2 this time, at 0. And then right in the middle, I'd be at negative 2. In this case, this would be pi over 8. But So this would be what it looked like without the shifts. Now, what happens with the shifts? Okay, Not only do the coordinate points move, but all the asymptotes move as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to graph an entirely new picture and see if I can do this appropriately. You're still going to have two asymptotes, okay? But this time they're not going to be mirror images on each side. Okay, this thing is going to be shifted appropriately. So instead of being exactly half and exactly half, okay, we have to move everything over left pi over 8. Now pi over 8 is what we maybe should increment count by. So pi over 8 2 pi over 8 is pi over 4. Negative pi over 8. Negative pi over 4. Negative 3 pi over 8. Now, why did I do this? Because originally it was the pi over 4s, but everything's got to move left pi over 8. So my new asymptote will be a positive pi over 8. And then instead of being at negative pi over 4, I got to move left. It'll be at negative 3 pi over 8. So your asymptotes aren't mirrored with your or your y-axis being exactly in the middle if you shift it, because remember, you pick up your graph and move it that far. Okay. Now, originally, my middle coordinate point would be at 0, but i got to move it up, well, left pi over 8 and up 1. So I move it left pi over 8 and up 1. So instead of being here, left pi over 8, up 1. I lied. Oh, it still is going to be at 0, so it is going to be up 1. So left pi over 8, up 1. That's your middle guy. Now what happens to the ones in the middle, or in between? So between 0 and pi over 4, I had it up at 2. Well, i got to move it left pi over 8 and up another 1. So this originally would have been here, okay, right in the middle of the home base and your asymptote. Let's, let's rephrase this because this gets hard. Between your middle home base and your asymptote, you have a coordinate point at 2, but in this case, you got to move it up 3. So between them, i got to go up to 3. And between here, it's got to be down. Instead of being at 1, it's got to be down 2 more. So at negative 1 would be the other one. And that gets super tricky.
Okay. So we will practice things like that as we go through in class and work on our worksheet. So once again, don't be afraid, especially the last two, if you didn't get it. We will still keep plugging along, and I hope that you have a wonderful day.